Very good morning and happy Sabbath to uh, all of you. I think uh, I would be a lot clearer if I remove my mask. You know, the title of uh, the sermon this morning is The Great Reset versus The Ultimate Reset. Now, how many of you have uh, heard or is uh, familiar with this word, The Great Reset? Well, you know, I believe that, uh, if not most, some of us have heard of this uh, term, the Great Reset. Now, what is the real meaning of the word reset? You know, when things are going very well, when things are efficient, when things are not broken, is there a need for a reset? There is no need. When the opposite happens, then there will be a need for a reset. You know, our world is so much entrenched with capitalism. You know, when you uh, talk about capitalism, you talk about commerce, you talk about business, you talk about finances. All these are various terms which uh, describe what capitalism is. You know, it is said that uh, money makes the world go round. And certainly, you know, money greases the wheel of the economy. You know, when something is wrong somewhere in the world, be it wars, uh, natural disasters, diseases, pestilences, whatever, it will definitely impact the economy. And we have experienced that, we have witnessed that over the past two years during this uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. You know how um, this pestilence, this pandemic or pandemic, uh, some of uh, us uh, like to uh, say it differently, how it has impacted the lives of every one of us, where everything stops. No one is allowed to get out of your home. There's no business, you know. A lot of businesses went bankrupt, you know. Uh, children cannot go to school. You know, what a, a, a dramatic uh, a trauma to the life um, all across our world. And we have inherited this capitalist model since World War II. And today, you know, as we look at um, the history of our world, there are so uh, many resets. If you look back into our, uh, the annals of uh, the world, you know, we notice that there have been different phases of what we call the Industrial Revolution, right? You know, in fact, the world has um, went through three Industrial Revolution, and we are on the fourth Industrial Revolution. You know, mankind always try to achieve, you know, to get better and better. You know, when the first industrial revolution came around, mankind used water and steam power to mechanize production. The second revolution used electric power to create mass production. You see, the word production, it recurs again and again. The men want to produce more and more. And the word produce and production is part and parcel of this capitalist model that the world is so much enmeshed and so much entrenched in. You know, the third industrial revolution used electronics and information technology to automate. And today we are experiencing the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution. And what is the fourth industrial revolution? Well, the fourth industrial revolution is a fusion of advances in artificial intelligence, they call AI, 
robotics, the Internet of Things, genetic engineering, quantum computing, and much more. And uh, during this uh, recent uh, pandemic, we have experienced the power of this fourth industrial revolution. You see, the first three revolutions increases the production right, of men. There is, to a certain degree, some control. But this fourth industrial revolution, while it is very impressive, it affords the powers that be tremendous control. We all have experienced that, right? You, you can't go to places, you know, uh, without this mice jatra. And there are certain requirements that you have to fulfill in order to be accepted into uh, certain places, especially public places, you see. So if you were to extrapolate what we are getting into, into the future, you know, we could very easily see that there is going to be more and more uh, control. The government of the world will exert control over our lives. You know, reset or change is everywhere. Now, we look at the Bible, you know, there are resets as well. Some are major, some are very uh, uh, minor, all right? And uh, when God created this world, you know, he declared that it was very good, all right? But things began to change because man had sinned. Sin came to the world, and uh, since then, the world has become very different. Let me see if this is... Uh Okay, now, the Great Reset uh, is the name of the uh, fifth annual meeting of the World Economic uh, Forum. And it was held in June uh, 2020, and it brought together high-powered people, people in business, you know, like um, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and there are political leaders, you know, past prime ministers, past uh, uh, presidents, as well as current ones, they all come together and they met and uh, discuss and laid plans as to how to resolve the present crisis and future crisis. You know, um, this meeting was called by uh, Prince Charles as well as uh, Klaus Schwab, the founder and chairman of uh, uh, WEF, which stands for World Economic uh, Forum. And the theme is how to deal with global crisis. And if there is one, how to rebuild society and again the economy. Now in Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 5 to 7, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth as a result of sin, and that every intent of the force of his heart was only evil continually, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. You know, as we read these verses, we can't help if you read again and again, the Lord was gutted as a result of what he had seen, as a result of what sin has done to his creation. And he has no choice. And he has to reset things. And that is probably the, the greatest and significant reset that uh, we have read. And so God blessed Noah after the flood and all that and said uh, to uh, Noah, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and the fear of you and the dread of you shall be on every beast of the earth and every bird of the air, everything that moves on the earth, all the fishes of the sea, they are all given unto your stewardship. 
And that was the uh, reset that God has made. You know, uh, the Time magazine, there, there is a uh, magazine that um, was totally dedicated to this great reset. And it says that the COVID-19 pandemic has provided a unique opportunity to think about the kind of future we want. Time partnered with the World Economic Forum, WEF, to ask leading thinkers to share ideas for how to transform the way we live and work. Now, these are a few uh, excerpts, uh, quotations from this forum. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of COVID-19 uh, crisis. To improve the state of the world and the economic, uh, World Economic Forum is starting the Great Reset Initiative. The world is increasingly afflicted by inequalities which the COVID pandemic is only exacerbating, making it worse. Yet economy workers have found themselves out of jobs with no protection. The digital divide means that underprivileged students in lockdown get even more behind. And queues are forming in underfinanced food banks with images recalling those from the Great Depression. We have seen images of that. The COVID-19 crisis and the political, economic and social disruptions it has caused is fundamentally changing the traditional context for decision making. The inconsistencies in advocacies and contradictions of multiple systems from health and financial to energy and education are more exposed than ever amidst a global context of concern for lives, livelihoods and the planet. Leaders find themselves at a historic crossroads, managing short-term pressures against medium and long-term uncertainties. As we enter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery, this initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of global relations, the direction of national economies, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of a global common interest. Drawing from the vision and vast expertise of the leaders engaged across the forum's communities, the Great Reset Initiative has a set of dimensions to build a new social contract that honours the, digni the dignity of every human being. What's wrong with that? Sounds very noble. Sounds good. Now, the World Economic Forum has developed a reputation as a trusted platform for informed collaboration and, and, uh, uh, and co uh, collaboration and cooperation between all stakeholders. And uh, in, uh, for the sake of time, uh, you know, it is basically uh, saying that uh, there's a need for a great uh, uh, reset in creating and reshaping the world. Now, the founder and chairman of uh, WEF said this, the pandemic represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, to reimagine and reset our world. Now in the year 2008, there was a world financial uh, crisis. And uh, he said, what a missed opportunity that was to reset the world then. America being the leading economic power during those years, chose to stimulate the economy by money printing. And he said, we should not allow crisis to go to waste. And these leaders are anticipating there will be many more uh, crises. He said this, COVID-19 lockdowns may be gradually easing, but anxiety about the world's social and economic prospects is only intensifying. It doesn't get better. There is good reason to worry. A sharp economic downturn has already begun, and we could be facing the worst depression since 1930s. Well, just think about uh, the interruption that the war in Ukraine. I, want, I, I don't want to go into that. You know, you, you just expand on it. Um, and how it has uh, impacted 
the world's economy, um, uh, logistics, you know, the, the supply chain, and so on. He went on to say this, to achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies, from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the United States to China must participate, and every industry from oil, gas to tech must be transformed. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism. Considerable attention recently has been drawn to the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Initiative, which regards the COVID-19 pandemic as an opportunity to accelerate the globalist objective of increasingly exchanging national sovereignty for international governance. Warning the world has hit an inflection point. And this is from Becky Anderson, one of the CNN uh, anchor. Joe Biden said this, now is a time when things are shifting. There's going to be a new world order out there. Uh, he is not the first president to use this term. And we have got to lead it. And by the way, Russia and China says that they want to lead it. So you can imagine there is already established a oppo opposing forces wanting to lead the world. And uh, he went on to say that we have got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. Right there and then, you already have two camps. Ban Ki-moon, UN Secretary General, said this, you know, we need to save our planet. We need to lift people out of poverty and advance, advancing economic growth. And um, there has to be sustainable development, which is the pathway to the future. The Earth is our only home. Not the moon, not, the, not Mars, right? Earth is our only home. You know, there are clear and present danger of climate change, which, can, which we cannot uh, ignore, and we cannot burn our way to prosperity. And Pope Francis, been a very influential uh, personality in the world stage, says, says this, both the global catas catastrophes, COVID and climate change, prove that we do not have time to wait. Time urges us, and as COVID-19 demonstrated, this is the moment to act. We are at the edge. Now, those who... Um, have a knowledge of Bible prophecy, especially uh, Revelation 13, you will have a hunch as to where these things are moving. All right? There are some observations and questions that perhaps we want to ask. You will notice that the goal of the world's leaders are very similar, very congruent with the agenda of the Pope. And we will ask the question, will the crisis of the world bring religion and civil power together to face the challenges ahead? Does the crisis of the world, the thinking heads of the world, eventually come together with religion? Now, where will this union of religion and civil power lead the world to? You know, we look at the, the Bible, Bible prophecy, it gives us a lot of direction. Now, I'm not going to even mention, you know, the identity of the sea bees or, 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 or the land bees. You know, it is very counterproductive for me to even mention because there is a prophetic chain that you need to go through in order for you to understand the book of Revelation, especially Revelation 13, uh, the book of Daniel, Revelation 17, 18, and so on and so forth. And when you read those uh, books, you know, you realize that, again, you know, God's book referred to the economy, the finances of the world, you know, buying and selling. 
You know, in the book, uh, Education 179, it says this, the present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes. Well, this was written like um, almost 200 years ago. Seems like this is referring to the delegates who's attending this WEF. You know, how, how things match so nicely. Thinking men and women of all classes have their attention uh, fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element. And they recognize that something great and, deci and decisive is about to take place that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Well, world's leaders have mentioned that we are at an inflection point, we are on the verge. How similar these words uh, was written many, many years ago. There are not many, even among educators and statesmen, who comprehend the causes that underline the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problem of moral corruption, poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime. They are struggling in vain to place business operations on a more secure basis. So men will fail in their attempt to create order in the world's uh, system. If men would give more heed to the teaching of God's word, they would find a solution of the problems that perplex them. You know, in Psalms uh, 127 verse 1, it says that uh, unless the Lord builds the house, men labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. So when you take away God's participation, in our lives, right? Men will find that they can go nowhere. Again, from the pen inspiration, the days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despises of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are potentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. You know, one of the minor prophets said this in Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation. A day of devastation and, and uh, desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. You know, in Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, you know, while the leaders of the world pluck up peace and tranquility and prosperity, we have to watch out. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17, it says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind. Only God can bring about a permanent change and reset to our world. Man's solution, at best, will give temporary positive respite.
But in the long run, it will surely run you trouble. Why? Because the problem of greed, the problem of evil, wickedness, and sin is still there. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4 to 5. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Folks, this is the ultimate reset. Far more greater and permanent than the so-called great reset that man is trying to formulate. You know, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 to 33, Jesus Christ draw our attention to the parable of the fig tree. Now learn this parable. What did he say? Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. You know, there are way marks in the world that we can, we can see. And this parable certainly talks about that. Now, how can we be ready for this ultimate reset that God is planning? Perhaps, you know, we need to take time to uh, reflect about our spiritual lives and ask ourselves this question. Do we need a spiritual reset in our lives? No, while we are aware of all the things that uh, the world is trying to do, you know, the most crucial question, the more greater urgency than the great reset is to ask ourselves, in our lives. Then and only then are we ready for that ultimate reset that we all have been looking for. May God bless all of us.